Hey, what's up everybody? Nexel here. Today we're on YouTube watching the new Missing Link trailer that just dropped maybe about 20 minutes ago. So instead of doing the sensible thing and going to sleep, I am actually up going to record a live reaction to my thoughts and everything I think about the trailer that just dropped. I do know that they just announced they're trying to get beta testers for I think the UK and Australia. Unfortunately, that does not apply to us, but hopefully if they ever ask for beta testers in the States, I would be happy to apply and actually let you all know what I find if I'm able to apply. But without further ado, let's go ahead. Let's take a look at what this trailer has for us. まさか氷着者手に負えなければ本家扱いということでいいんじゃないですか君の心を試すのにちょうどいい任務もあるしアストラル界へ赴き鳩レスの討伐を行いますアストラル界は無と有とがつながる世界氷着者はまず本家で保
that is doable. I do have to kind of recap myself on some of the information that's come out because it comes out like once every six months. All right, so yeah, we've got our player character here. We start off with the whole Union Cross Gang here. So we got uh, Daybreak Town in the background. Uh, we've got Ephemer, we've got Scald, we've got Trithi, and then of course we've got the five foretellers here. So kind of showing that these do go back to back, um, trying to like link this prologue to, I actually, like this is all still kind of prologue-esque kind of information, right? Because it sounds like it, it comes, or it looks like it comes right after uh, like the whole Union Cross thing finished, but we're going to definitely learn where it, where it falls in the timeline as like, more goes on right so gps action rpg but a little bit later down the line they say that you don't have to travel outside at all so let's keep going here first of all loving the character design right like i you know it's it's very kingdom hearts reminiscent right with the way the faces are made the eyes everything but something about the way that they're making the character designs now actually seems a little bit more mature and more like integrated like final fantasy wise right like we've got more characters with like zippers buttons buckles the facial features are different the hairstyles are different so we're actually kind of deviating into more like creative character design so i'm a big fan of that um, because it kind of gives it a more like mature feeling right like we went from the first Kingdom Hearts which was very very goofy to the like current version which is like goofy but very semi-serious and very like I don't know I like the aesthetics of where we're going here okay so this is likely what the whole GPS thing is gonna look like and honestly let's take a let's take a glimpse of this map right here right so We've got our player character with this radius around them. We've got all these little red shadowy figures, which I'm guessing are heartless. But also each of these characters here, like Rue over here, Jacques over here, they've got heartless symbols next to them. And then these like green points here, which I'm not exactly sure what they are. We've also got the 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 uh, behemoth here, which hopefully is kind of actually hinting at the idea that you can raid locally kind of like pokemon go where you raid giant pokemon you can raid giant kingdom hearts bosses so maybe these are like mini fights maybe these are like checkpoints and then hopefully this is kind of like a raid boss which kind of makes it a little difficult because that does mean you actually do have to go outside but we'll we'll have to see how they implement it and then of course the red shadowy figures so yeah we see like a soldier over here um i'm not really sure which one this is it kind of it's very different right because they always have different names for these um so wait let's let's slow that down right maybe maybe we'll get more info from slowing it down so yeah the heartless like spawn in similarly to any other kingdom hearts game so travel the world without stepping outside right so we start here and then we slowly zoom out no, I'm I'm totally kidding. That's not what New York looks like. That's Steph Japan? Yeah, no, that's Japan. That's my bad. I got too excited. I was hoping it was the States. Um, but yet yeah, we do see all these like big giant treasure icons with this huge concentration in Japan here. So I hope that doesn't mean we all have to travel to Japan to get the most amount of treasures, right? But maybe this is maybe this is actually a good like screenshot of what the beta looks like right now right like they have all these here because like it's beta tested in japan and then like these small ones over here and there just to kind of like show where their beta testing locations are right so we got a few in like australia right here which we know they're about to beta test we got a few in europe over here which we know they're about to beta test so um Honestly, if you if this looks even like if you know any giant popular cities that exist here, expect that you're probably going to be within a region that's going to test this game. Uh, let's see here. All right, what else we got? So we got a new red-haired friend here who starts by showing off that he gets completely served by this dark side. And then this super rusty keyblade which is actually just the starlight right like this is just a rusty starlight so maybe this person is like he fought in the union cross war they kind of look like Kyrie, to be honest the the blue eyes the red hair um 
yeah, I'm not exactly sure who this person is or what sort of importance they're gonna have. Unless it's just Reno from Final Fantasy VII, who really knows? But yeah, this is the Starlight here, so we definitely know they're from that time frame. And it's rusted, kind of showing that it's like, it's worn out, right? They also said Disney World. What Disney World is this? This is a forest. Is this Tarzan? Are we bringing it back? I'm not too sure. But then we also get a look here at what are effectively our medals. So it looks like we have four that we can equip. And each of these symbols kind of represents what it does. Maybe these are levels. Um, and our only two commands here, I think, are attack, jump, and possibly move. I'm not really sure. All right, let's take a look. So, you know, the way it looks actually, it doesn't actually look like you have to physically move. I'm not too sure because they don't have any sort of like wheel over here showing you running around. But what we do show is that like you can tap these or do something to kind of activate their effect, right? And then they have like a reload time. Which is kind of weird because it actually doesn't show you what the reload time is. So that's probably going to be built in a little bit later. Because honestly, like, look at these, like, character graphics right now. They look so, like, unresolved. I'm sure they're going to touch this up. Like, this looks like heal. This looks like arrow. This looks like quake. Um, so likely we're going to have a deck of four, potentially more. I'm not really sure. Again, this is no final design. But it looks like you have to go in with kind of a preloaded deck, just like you did in Union Cross where you had preloaded medals. Okay, what else do we got going on here? So we've got new worlds going on. And again, this kind of looks like levels, right? Because he used the Sora and then it goes into the reload timer here. Um, I guess the circle is the reload time, but... Maybe they tell you in the description what the cooldown time is. We've got these beautiful worlds, which is kind of weird because, again, this kind of gives it, like, a console-y feeling and not, like, a Pokemon Go feeling, right? Like, this is, like, super high-res, whereas in Pokemon Go, you've got your character who walks but kind of, like, walks in a circle and you could spin him around and all the areas around you look super unresolved. But this is, like, high-res, like, landmarks and places. So I wonder if this is going to be, like, a combination game where you play the game, but you get benefit from doing the GPS things, right? Like raiding, spinning stops, fighting Heartless. Um, so I wonder if that's how you farm. I wonder if the GPS feature is how you farm. Otherwise, you can still get the same things in game by completing tasks is what I'm kind of leaning towards right now. Because, of course, there's a Moogle shop, right? But this still looks like the in-game, non-running around thing. Because you're not going to hold up your phone like this and, like, walk around hoping that you can just see the stuff, right? Like, I don't think it's going to be that level of AR. Um, I think it's mostly you're going to travel and then open up the game and then take a look around is what I'd have to guess. Because it's kind of hard to integrate, like, an RPG into this, like, AR type of gaming. And of course we got the door there's always the door i wonder you know what honestly what would be super low-key really awesome is if you could import your character if you have union cross data i think that would be incredibly sick like incredibly awesome like if you could reload your costumes and all that stuff that would be amazing i think that'd be awesome and then it would like kind of entice people to like come back but maybe that's just me um because i know that all data for a person's character is locally stored in a phone right like there's no more online server that stores any of this info um so it's like if you threw away that device or it no longer exists like you're out of luck so i think it'd be awesome i don't know if um if it would happen though that seems like a lot of work on square's part we got our good old time traveling-esque friend here who just somehow exists in every single timeline um and then i think that's it so we got another glimpse of like the scala ad kylum environment here and then of course we get the tag right here super awesome looking 
and then coming 2024 for iOS and Android, which is very important because if it was one or the other, I would have to buy a new phone if it's iPhone. I simply don't have iPhones and I simply am not a fan ever since my iPod broke. Um, so that's awesome. And then closed beta testing, recruiting participants. Like I really hope this is involves the state somehow. I could honestly see that it sort of has to right like there's a ton of people in the united states that play kingdom hearts that are gonna hop on this game and it kind of doesn't make sense to not beta test it because then like think about this giant country and then everything goes wrong right like a lot of urban areas in the states a lot of places where it could be tested so this would it would make perfect sense in my mind that before launching this to everybody we at least test it in all the big giant urban areas that exist within the world so i could see it happening in the states fingers crossed i would love to help beta test this and uh, kind of just put my foot in the door with square in that way but other than that, that is all my initial reactions. I'm super excited for this. Launching 2024. Now, that's kind of like a hard thing to interpret, right? Like it could be January or it could be December. Like when they uh, when they announced Kingdom Hearts 3, right? Like it was just like this vague winter. Like it was like a year. And then it was like a season. And then it was like the end of that season. So it's kind of like 2024... I'm aiming for December 2024, if I had to guess, right? Because Square's still working on, like, a ton of projects. Um, I'm pretty sure that Kingdom Hearts, is it's, it's the kind of project where it's just like, all right, everything that we do in this is super important. Because unlike a lot of other Square games, like Final Fantasy, everything in Kingdom Hearts is in a continuum, meaning that it's got to sort of make sense right like it's gotta make sense to everything that's happened so far um so like they can't just randomly throw willy-nilly cool ideals uh, ideas without actually thinking about how this ties into everything they're about to do so for example like i think just knowing what i know about kingdom hearts and like the 20 years that we've been doing this they've really got to think their way through this story because we're about to launch like a whole new saga like a whole brand new saga. And this is kind of laying the footwork for that saga, right? Like Union Cross had to do a lot. And we got like one story mission a month. So they really got to plan this out because they got to figure out like how long is the story going to be? How many parts are we going to include? Are we going to make it as long as Union Cross, which was like a five year game? Um, a five six year game so it's like they kind of have to do a little bit more planning because this is a game that continually updates right as opposed to a console game where it's like boom you have the whole story accessible to you right away you just gotta beat the story but here it's like all right we kind of have to figure out what our plans are right because during this time frame right like if they choose to make it like a five six year game kingdom hearts like four through eight could come out during that time frame right so I feel like this is, uh, it's December 2024 because they got to think their way through a lot of different things on top of the fact that they have to make it a good game, right? Like there's still game elements on top of the fact that they're adding it to the Kingdom Hearts universe. So there's a lot of stuff to that's kind of in the gray, mysterious area right now. But needless to say, I am super excited and really hoping they will have a beta test in the state. So really really looking forward to it i hope you all are too you can definitely count on me to be releasing content for this because even though with other games i'm kind of slow roll on the content for games that i really 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 care about you can definitely expect to see me more often but with that being said that's the end of this video thank you all so much for watching as always if you have any questions comments or concerns please feel free to leave a comment down below and i'd be happy to answer when i have the time if you want to talk about your feelings and everything from this trailer video in the discord go ahead and just type that into your url it is a permanent link it should always go to my discord and then let us know in that missing link section what your thoughts are and if you hope that costumes come back but that's all for now thank you all so much for watching and as always until next time take it easy